morning children i pray that you are fine and that you had a wonderful week we've started a new month most of you are on holiday some of you are about to go into holiday and i hope you've planned for the for this month and planned what you're going to do on your holiday not uh, just sleep right through I pray that you will have adventure, fun, relaxation during this holiday. So, and we, today we are going to study from the book of Acts. I would love you to just get your Bibles, open the book of Acts, open chapter 6, and we'll go quickly through them. So I want you to just uh, open it, get your Bible. You can pause this and then go back and then you can come back so that we can share the Bible together, share the word together. Uh, so today the topic for the month will be Jesus changes my life for good. Look through the month as, we, as you go to church, as you listen to these recordings, look and see how Jesus has changed other people's lives and that you are no different. How does he change your life? Today, though, we are going to uh, read and learn about Stephen and Stephen talking to Jesus. So that is really exciting. Before we start, let's say a quick prayer and, and uh, just ask the Lord to lead us as we read that we may have understanding. Father Lord, we praise your name and give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord, that as we read from the word, we read about you. We read about your love, your mercy. We, we also, as we read, we learn how you can, you tell us that even for us, we are no different, that you um, are our father and you are no respecter of person and indeed, we are the children of the most high God. Amen. So today, and I hope you've opened the book of Acts as we read about Stephen and I like it. Stephen, I think as we learn about this word, he's talking about um, him being a friend to Jesus and about him being a friend to Jesus is also how you walk with him and that the only way that you can be a friend to God is to be a friend to Jesus you see and that is how we then become friends of God and um, so as we just talk we'll just briefly talk about it of how what happened with Stephen so when you read the book of Acts, and let us go to chapter 6, and when we are done, please take some time, read through it, and see how exciting this word is. So Stephen um, is chosen, but let us see how he's chosen. So when we are reading chapter 6, we see that there were, do you remember the 12 disciples? And out of the 12 disciples there, and where they were living, they, be, they begin to disciple other people, and those people disciple other people. So after a long time, after a while, we find that there were so many disciples. And at the same time, there were different kinds of ministries that were happening. One of the ministries was looking after widows. So when you look at sometimes the, there are parts of the Bible where we are told to look after those who are oppressed, to look after those who don't have fathers, to look after the widows and so um, amongst them there were widows who were not being looked after very well so what happened is that the disciples have a meeting now the leadership of the disciples they have a meeting and when they have the meeting uh, they're like um, so what do we do because there are some widows who are not getting the service that is need that they need and so the disciples say you know what our job is to preach and teach and also um, to study the word and to pray for that community. And now he says, do we stop reading the word of God? Do we stop preaching? Do we stop doing this which is helping the community to serve the widows, to look after the widows and take care of them? And they're like, no. So what do we do? Let us look for people who can do this type of ministry whilst we continue with our kind of ministry. So they come up with a job description. How are we going to know who is rightful for this job? 
I love the job description. Well, the disciple says, look, we need to look for people who have godly character, moral fitness, full of the Holy Spirit, and full of wisdom. I really wish that that is how an interview was done. You know, when you're, going, when you're making an application to be a doctor, a lawyer, I wish they would say we are looking for somebody who has the Holy Spirit, who is, oh, who has um, moral fitness, who has godly character. They'll be looking at other things. But this, for me, is the highest job description that anybody could be looking at. So because of this, Stephen is identified. Stephen and seven other people. I really want you to look at those names. It is names I've never seen. Interesting names, but they fit the job description. So when Stephen is chosen, it go to verse 8 of chapter 6. It says that Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, he did great, wondrous, miraculous things. Right? So he still did the work and still led in the work of the widows, but he continued doing, you know, the kind of work that Jesus was doing. There was healing, there was miracles. And when other people saw this, what happened is that they began to speak ill of Stephen. I don't know why. I know you're asking yourself that question. I mean, he's doing what is right. Why is it that his name is being dragged down the mud? Ah, so... Stephen doesn't stop, and he continues to talk. Do you know that what these people do? They pick men who are in the community, give them a bribe. I hope you understand what a bribe is. Is somebody giving you money so that you can do the wrong thing? And so they are bribed to say that Stephen is not saying the right words and that he's blaspheming. Remember those words because those are some of the words that they spoke about Jesus. They twisted the words of Stephen to show that Stephen was saying the wrong thing. In fact, they say something like Stephen says that we will no longer follow the book of Moses and that our customs will change. If some of you will just remember actually, do you remember if you've read this in science, where some people, or history actually, where some people said that the world is flat and somebody else said, no, the world is round. And some people who said the world is round, do you know they were killed? So the interesting thing is that some people, if they're not going to have their way, they will make sure to try and do whatever they can to make sure that they have it their way and not the right way. So that is what happened to Stephen. The people spoke so badly of Stephen. So what happens to Stephen? Stephen goes into the, uh, he's taken before the Sanhedrin. 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 Woo, I hope I got that right. That is the Jewish court. And they ask him, Stephen, have you said these things? Now the things which are not right. But and you know when you go to court, let me tell you really quickly, you, you, if you've watched some of those movies, the lawyer will ask, tell me, did you uh, take the pen that was on the table? And you know you could have taken the pen and thought it was your pen, but when you got home, you realized it's not your pen. And all you need to say is, actually, I just picked a pen from the table, and it looked like my pen, but I realized it's not my pen. But in court, the lawyer might say, did you pick the pen? Say a simple yes or no will do. And then you cannot explain what you want to say. You know the whole story? And that is what at the Sanhedrin they're asking Stephen. Say yes or no. But that's not what Stephen does. Stephen begins to speak and tell them about from the book of Genesis. He talks about Abraham. Then he moves on. He talks about Joseph. He finishes off by talking about Moses. And right through, he is showing them how the Jews have rejected Jesus. He tells them this very long story. If you read it, it's a beautiful story because that story is captured in the book of Genesis and Exodus. And it's chapter after chapter. But Stephen is summarizing this story. So 
he says to them, this is what, he, he says the story so that he is showing them how the rejection has been right through. And then comes the one part which he says, you have rejected Christ. And this is so scary of what he says. If you go to chapter 7 and 51, he calls them, you stiff-necked people. You have always rejected Christ. You always resist the Holy Spirit. And so he talks about that. Do you know what they do to Stephen? Get him out of the court, take him out, and they stone him. They don't like what Stephen is doing, and they stone him. Now this is the part where Stephen, uh, he looks up to the heaven, and do you know what? He sees Jesus. He sees Jesus standing uh, by the right hand of God. And he's so excited, and that is how Stephen dies. Do you know, if you read other scriptures in Hebrews, it says, and Jesus is seated at the right hand of our Father. Do you know, Stephen is seeing Jesus standing, like a standing ovation. He's so excited. This is my child, not scared to speak my word. So, I just want you to read this, find out more about uh, Stephen, read the story, think about it, see the images in your head and in your mind, and that is the same way that we can remain friends of Jesus. He does not fail us. He doesn't. Even at the last moment, Jesus is standing and he is saying that he's waiting for Stephen. So thank you for today's lesson. Read a little bit more of it and I hope that you will have a wonderful week. Now we are going to listen to the memory verse coming from the book of Proverbs 3, uh, verse 5 to 6. Hi, my name is Wangashi and a memory verse today comes from the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 and it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understandings. In all, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Can we finish off and just, uh, if you bow down your head and we can give God thanks. Uh, Father Lord, we praise you. We thank you for this word. We thank you for seeing the life of Stephen. We thank you that his character was beyond reproach, that he stood for you right until the last minute. Help us to stand for you and uh, help us to be better friends uh, and to walk and journey with you in this life. We love you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen.